Hello you beautiful muzzle face trollic lovers and welcome to the Wheels of the Wheel podcast. I'm Ashaman Ren. I'm Suanna Sadai. This week we are going to do something a little bit different. Yes, there's going to be no chapter recaps. We're not talking about the Eye of the World book. Instead, we're going to be talking about Eye of the World TV adaption. Yeah, so we're talking big TV news. Big TV gossip. What's new, what's rumoured. What we've learned so far. That's exactly it, so stay tuned. And let's enjoy the show, it's going to be full of speculation. And TV show spoilers as well as Eye of the World spoilers. And I think there's going to be some massive disagreements. We've had massive disagreements before we even started recording, so this yeah. It's going to be so great. Yeah. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. Welcome to the Weaves of the Wheel podcast. A Whale of Time community journey through the events of the Third Age. What was, what will be, and what is may yet fall under the shadow. So there's a lot to discuss. Oh, so much. Yeah, so we've got new cast members yeah, that have been cast announced. Leaks. You know, uh, we've had trailer release dates. Potential trailer release dates. Yes. And, and potential episode one air dates correct we've also have that we could start with something old or better yet something new or something borrowed or maybe something blue with the silver sixpence in your shoe so we've just come off the back of these four teasers set teasers clip teasers for the tv show yeah. so we had tam sword yes we did Tom's guitar. Yep. Matt's dagger. Matt's dagger. And then Moraine said I herself. And Moraine, yeah. Yeah. Now, in the fandom, people say this is something old in the sword. Yep. The guitar is brand new. Yes. You know, Tom never had a guitar in, in the book series. Yep. And Matt's taken the dagger, which he's claiming is something borrowed, because he's bored. definitely going to return it. He's going to return it, yeah. He's not stealing. No. Nope. Oh, when they come this way back, Yes. <laughs> On the way back, he's going to drop it off. He's going to leave it off. And he's going to yeah. say thank you very much. And then something blue, of course, Moraine said I, is of the blue of ajar. Of the blue ajar. Now we're sort of waiting to see what does that mean? Yeah. It's a code for something. Yeah. You know, is it a code though? Or did the what fandom just suddenly decide that this is what was happening? And and um, what on Prime just stirred into it and was like, yep, yeah, let's just go for it. That's very possible. It could be that, you know, the fandom saw something, because, you know, you see things that aren't there a lot of the time. They saw something in this, they put it together, and what on Prime was just like, ah, fuck it, let's do it, why not? Yeah. You know, let's have a laugh with it, they like it, we'll do it. I mean, they seem to be acknowledging the fandom in quite a nice way, yeah. and playing off of them, so it's not that far, far-fetched to say that that's something that could have happened. But the other side of it is, is that maybe it was intentional and maybe it is a code. You said something about wedding rituals off air. Do you want to hit on that? Like, explain what that means. So, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Most people know it is a wedding ritual. Right. Yeah, it's something that symbolises a good, healthy marriage. Right. Now, one of the things I was thinking is that old, new, borrowed, blue symbolises marriage. Marriage season is May, June time. Yeah. Particularly June, because... June is named after Juno, who is the Roman goddess of... Do you know what? No, I have no idea. I don't think I'm going to like it either. Marriage. Marriage, yeah. This is where I leave. <laughs> Run for the hills, Ren. <laughs> nope. Run for the hills. Because Juno is the goddess of marriage, and that is why wedding season is typically in June. Okay. So it could be hinting that we're getting something major in June. So when you say something major, are you talking about the release of a trailer, perhaps? Or are you talking about some new set photos? Like, <laughs> I... where, where, where Where's, what's huge for you? Like, for me, set photos is... Um, <laughs> but, you know, a trailer now. A trailer, a trailer makes trailer it real. Makes it real. A trailer makes a trailer it real. A trailer makes it damn real. I think it symbolises a trailer. We're getting these small little clips 
not trailers in themselves but just small little clips of perhaps things that could appear in the trailer and it's sort of hinting that you're gonna see this in its full glory in june you know what i'd be really really disappointed if the trailer was just a combination of these clips because you've I'll, seen them yeah i'd be yeah. really really disappointed with I, that. I don't think it is I in mean, fact no no i wouldn't be dis- i'd be pissed off if that was it i think potentially we might see these props in the trailer but i don't think we'll necessarily see them the way that we've already been shown them okay for example we might see rand or tam using the sword rather than just a sword laying on the ground we might see tom playing the guitar okay so so far we've had things in the middle of the month like we had something in january the middle of february yeah middle of march Mm -hmm. so are we going to get something in the middle of this month And possibly May, if your theory's right. Well, are we going to get something in April? Who knows? Uh, Time will tell. I think it's probably likely that we will. I mean, the actual ritual doesn't finish with something blue. No, it doesn't, does it? No. What's it end with? Sixpence in your shoe. Sixpence in your shoe. I don't know. Are there any significant shoes in the Well, no. Some good stout <laughs> two rivers boots. Well, no, Neve always talks about some good shoes, isn't it? And she likes to whack people over the head. Or is that her stick? She's, she has a stick. She doesn't hit people with a boot. <laughs> hit me with your rhythm stick. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's something, I, I don't know, are there some, the comment section will have to tell us, are there any significant boots <laughs> in the <laughs> Wheel of Time that maybe is a clue for what we might see in April, who knows? And as for May, you said about there being something in mid-May, well, there's actually been a rumour floating around this last weekend that maybe the trailer might not be in June, maybe it might be on May the 12th, which happens to be a Wednesday, by the way. Why is that? So this kind of started by an update to the Will of Time Wikipedia page. Right. It said that it updated the names of episodes seven and eight, which right. we didn't have before. We, no. only, we only know the names one to six at this point. And also it updated to say that the first episode was going to air on the 3rd of November. That's which, like over six, seven months away. That is seven months That's away. ages away. It is a while away. Um, That's a whole turning of the wheel away. But if you think about it, we haven't had a trailer yet. And a trailer, a first trailer, will normally drop about six months before we actually get to see the full TV show or movie. Okay. There's usually a six-month period. Right. So if you think there's a trailer in May with it coming out in November, that is six months and that kind of makes sense. But there's more to this story. So Yeah, because there is more to this story yeah. because you spoke about to me about this a couple of days back yeah and i've been on the wikipedia page and i see nothing it has since been taken down so are you making this up i'm not making this up <laughs> i actually took a screenshot of the original entry on wikipedia so it is there i right. do have it but it's a bit difficult to share it <laughs> during the podcast like let me show you oh yeah but we can share it on our instagram pages right yeah, um, yeah yeah head over to will of time community on instagram and we'll, we'll certainly stick it up there yeah or we... on wheels of the wheel yeah on page as well uh we'll stick it up when we advertise the podcast and people yeah. can have a look themselves yeah we'll stick it on discord as yeah, well we can do that oh i think it's already in our discord server so if you want to come and join our discord server there's a channel in there for tv news and discussion and you can already see that screenshot in there okay but you do realise that anybody can edit Wikipedia, right? This is very true. Like, I could go can. on there and I can like write all sorts of crazy shit on there. Anybody can. Anybody can edit <laughs> and has. Yeah, this is the thing. Anyone can do that. Why is this one different? Well, here's the thing. After this happened, a tweet appeared from someone called What Insider who claims that a source told them, you know what the fandom's like with their sources, right? <laughs> that the trailer will drop on May the 12th and that on May the 12th, after the trailer drops, it will list the air date as November 3rd. Right. This is not something that is brand new information. It had been floating around a while ago before. There's quite a few people in the community who have heard this date previously, but some of them have wondered if potentially the date may have changed just due to some of the delays in filming. All right, so on a level with me here, mm-hmm. May the 12th, a Wednesday. Should I be getting excited? Am I genuinely going to see a trailer or are you just messing with me? I'm not messing with you. I think it it could be likely. I'm not going to sit here and say I absolutely guarantee it because my personal code is that something old, new, borrowed, blue signals June. 
Right. I think that's the code. I think what on Prime is is literally shining a light in our face and saying it's going to be in June, motherfuckers. But having said that, May 12th is not a brand new unheard of date. People have been coming up with this date for a little while. Okay. There are several people in the community that, you know, are quite well trusted and considered quite reliable who have been saying May is quite likely. But you do realise May is the start of summer, right? Uh, no, June is the start of summer. So May is not the start okay, May is not the start of summer. <laughs> Please continue. Tell me where you're going with this. Well, in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> no, June is the start of summer. So it's it's the summer equinox is in, in June. And wedding season is typically June. Juno. Right. Juno, goddess of marriage. My personal belief is that June is probably bang on what they're actually telling us. But I'm not going to ignore the possibility that May is accurate. There are people who are considered very reliable, who are involved quite notably with some of the bigger what fandom camps who are saying actually May is a go. Mm, yeah. And And furthermore, we've been hearing for months many many months now coming from again many many sources have said that the tv show will air in the fall that's what americans call autumn right <laughs> and that is november december okay. is winter right december is winter time so that's so winter's not coming winter is very far away i hope because i'm literally just stepping out of it but mm -hmm. uh december is winter so therefore i think that would mess with a lot of people saying no it's definitely going to be in the fall of 2021 so okay. therefore six months november is the right time if you have a trailer in may the way i see it we've been waiting for so long what's another six months though? <sighs> what's another eight months what's another 12 years <laughs> you know who cares who knows who knows maybe they're talking in mars years because apparently mars one year on mars is two earth years maybe they're talking mars years maybe they're filming on mars maybe they are on mars maybe the wheel of time turns maybe they went through a portal stone and ended up in mars there is evidence to suggest that mars was once a very earth-like planet so maybe I the dark one won possible. there maybe the dark one won shocking and that's why you know anyway <laughs> we, do, we digress let's not get into like philosophy here. we're talking about the tv show right yeah. now <laughs> we've got potentially i think if not may definitely june that's okay. i'm gonna put my 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 money on that if we haven't seen anything by the end of june then they fucked up somewhere yeah well, there there have been rumours of reshoots anyway, haven't there? Mm. Like how many, how much of that is true? Who knows? Like there's that big rumour that um, they released the first couple of episodes to a test to, audience, to a test audience, and the feedback it was not was, well received. Eh, eh. So they've had to redo it, which has happened with many notable films in the past. Yeah, but pre, but no, this is just a rumour. There's been nothing solid. Like oh no, no, it's just a rumour. Yeah. I mean, I could go online and say. I saw it and I thought it was shit or I saw it and I thought it was... Br anyone can do that. Yeah. You know, how do you prove it? Uh, it's another thing. Um, but yeah, it is just a rumour. However, it happens. Um, it, it is a rumour, but it is something that happens. I mean, if you think about uh, Suicide Squad, for example, it was going to be an R-rated movie. They put it out to a test audience. The test audience hated it. They reshot a whole bunch of stuff. It was slightly delayed and it came out to be a stinking ball of crap but that hey, whoa, 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 what did you really talk about man Will, you know, Will Smith was getting jiggy with it in he there. was getting jiggy <laughs> with it that's another story altogether okay okay so if what you're saying is actually true and not just coppling bullshit Might um, <laughs> <laughs> then we should be expecting something mid-April right well, yeah, you would argue that we should get another teaser b before then, because we've literally, since October last year, we've had something every single month from Watton Prime. Yeah, and so far we've had Egwene and Perrin in that audio clip. Yes. We had uh, Matt Stagger. Yeah. We've had Tam Ran Sword. Mm -hmm. We've had Tom's Guitar. Yeah. And most recently we had Moraine channeling the One Power. Oh, yeah. So that just leaves Nynaeve and Lan. Notably absent yeah. is Nynaeve. Please be aware there are now full spoilers till the end of the series from this moment on until 19 minutes and 45 seconds, where it is then safe to continue, assuming you've read Eye of the World. Good I mean, time. Lan as well, but Lan less so than Nynaeve. Yeah. Nynaeve is a bigger, more relevant character than Lan is. And I'm not putting Lan down. I love, you know I love Lan. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, but um, at least in the early part of the books, he's a quieter character that's sort of off to the side. Nynaeve, you would think, we would have had something. We've had nothing. We've had nothing. Is that because Nynaeve's not an important character? <gasps> Outrageous! No, no, hear, no, hear me out, hear me out, right? If you look at the Emmonfield Five... <laughs> at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got Rand, who is probably the most important, right? Because he's the Dragon Reborn. Uh, I guess. Right. You've got Egwene or Matt. I'd put a second because Egwene's the Amaralyn and leads the White Tower and unites all female Spoilers. Chandlers. Well, here's what it is. Spoilers. Here's what it is. Well, I'll right? pay for it anyway. <laughs> so you know, I'll invalidate your point right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got Matt, who leads the armies and you know kills a lot of people off camera that Beep. you know <laughs> and then probably tied for fourth and fifth are Perrin and Nynaeve Perrin sleeps a lot mm. and Nynaeve doesn't really do anything significant in my opinion oh I um, would say Perrin is the least relevant of the five I know you've said this before that if you were to cut one you would cut Perrin mm-hmm. but is there a possibility that um, Nynaeve in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of the Emmon Fielders, that she is not that important. And therefore, that's why we don't really have anything for her. And actually, Zoe Robbins, if you do listen to this, you're very quiet on social media. How's anybody supposed to stalk you? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> I'm all right. What's wrong with you? Get it together. Get we want to stalk you, girl. Yeah. We all know what Get you're doing. Line. We all know what you're doing. We all know what you're eating, where you've been, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make man a stalker? Yes. yes. <laughs> First of all, I just would like to uh, advise you that you are dead to me now. Absolutely get the fuck out for starters <laughs> on that. That's ridiculous. That, that is that. Look. Okay, I'll give Nani one thing. She, okay. she cleans, she cleanses the one power. That's probably the only significant thing. And, she and that's has. not significant enough. Well, that's like, significant it's, it's, to a like, small sig- population. It's significant to the entire story. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sorry but Rand cannot defeat the Dark One if the power is still tainted. It's not going to happen. Yep. So actually, let me let me just list off Nynaeve's credentials okay. here. And I apologise for spoiling. I'm going to beep this shit to death here. She heals Stillin. She heals Gentlin. She yeah. heals the madness. She cleanses Sadine. She seals the fucking boar. She's queen a fucking Malkia and she gets Lan to actually fight which is fucking significant because he kills Demandred. So the being queen of Malkia doesn't really mean anything it because doesn't. you know it doesn't really give you any sort of significance into the will of time whatever. I mean Malkia doesn't even exist. It's covered by the blight. But because of she it, she kills... manages to lead the Malkieri all the way to oh, the fucking wow. Tarwin's Gap yeah, to because... fight in the last... It yeah. is significant yeah. in 2, the 000, last battle. 2,000 people are going to make the difference. 2,000 2, people are going to make a big and difference in Tarwin's Gap. it did make Tarwin's a major Gap. difference, actually. Whatever, but right? it did, though. Then you, get, it did. then you said, like, she heals gentle and stilling, and gentle and stilling, there's only a small population of people that can actually channel. But it doesn't matter about the channel. population so, of the people. So it matters about the significance to the story. So in terms of real people... If you're thinking about the population, the population of the story is insignificant to the books. I mean, there's only a small don't, number don't of the population. Say, don't they even say that the White That's Tower... That's argument. The, the white population tower, of the Randland. White, the White Tower you is... failed, Ren. The population of Randland. Yeah, that's right. Just keep keep, keep talking your <laughs> shit. Right? But, it's outrageously <laughs> stupid. You know, so cleansing I'll give you. That, that was significant. But oh, the, thank you. Was it But at the same time... At the same time, I think any healer could have done that. No, they couldn't. Because that was going to happen anyway, because no. it was it was part of the step for Rand to defeat the Dark One. So pretty Actually, much you could have put anybody there no, and it still would have happened. No, you need significant power to be able to channel the Sar Angrel to be able to do that. And there are not people of Nynaeve's level in channeling ability. There's only There's people a that are, yeah, who are stronger than her. Who Rand, so thank you for confirming but who Rand that, trust? And apart from Rand that... Rand doesn't trust these other people, so therefore he's not going to allow them to do yeah, it. but his Taviran would have sorted it out anyway. You know, his Taviran would have made sure that no, they didn't just Taviran it. Yeah, no, no, just Taviran. Just Taviran <laughs> it. Just sprinkle a little Taviran. I'm sorry, but uh, you're just outrageously wrong. So, here. therefore, I would probably go with Perrin I would as say, four and then Nynaeve as fifth. I would say Nynaeve is second. Second to To Rand. She's not. And I'm second. only giving Rand that just because he's the chosen one. Nynaeve's not second. So she that's is. why I think that Nynaeve is. is left She's to the end. She's above Egwene for sure. How is she above Egwene? Because Egwene fucks Garwin and we all know that that <laughs> is the 
bits of the story. Oh, you, you got me there, flipping <laughs> it. <laughs> Damn you, Egwene. Because we're going to have to beat the shit out of over this because we said we would not put major spoilers in this. Um, I say we continue with what we were talking about. Nynaeve is a very significant character and you're right, we've seen nothing of Nynaeve. No, not at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, there was this like small sort of teaser, was this her braid? But we couldn't really see her face no. or anything like that and it could have been anyone's braid. Yeah, it could be to any be of the two river women's braids. It could have yeah. been any braid. I mean, literally every time we see like a distant shot of a woman with a braid, we're like, like, is that Nynaeve or is it Egwene? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we've had nothing for Nynaeve. We've had nothing for Lan, but significantly, but significantly more so Nynaeve. Being absent is very, very noticeable to me. And I think if we are going to get something else before a trailer, hmm. I think it has to be Nynaeve. Or and, the shadow, or the shadow. I mean, I'd be love to see something from the shadow. <laughs> Just thinking about it, if the next bit in the in the rhyme is a sixpence in a shoe, well, Nynaeve is as tough as an old boot, so therefore it <laughs> works. Make it happen, what on Prime. You're welcome, I helped you out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And again, Zoe, put something up, man. What's yeah. up? <laughs> this, um, that's, that's the speculation for trailers and uh, sneak peeks and all of that. But wait, there is more. There is more. <laughs> <laughs> there has been a couple of leaked cast leaks potentially. Yeah. There, there are some people we know are associated with the show, but we yeah. don't necessarily know who they're playing or what they're exactly, doing. Yeah. But we had uh, Amma Patel. We we noticed something on, on I, his CV. Yeah, on IMDb <laughs> uh, that he is going to be playing in guitar. Yes, and that's. That's something we didn't know. We knew he was involved in the show for a little while, but we had no idea how. Uh, so that's relatively new, so to speak, in terms of leak. I mean, that's that's pretty major. Yeah, and I think you, you quite like um, Emma's Instagram page, don't you? Oh, my God. Do you know... You know when you get someone that's like, oh, this person's associated with the show, and you're like, right, follow them on Instagram. <laughs> but you don't really pay that much attention unless they're putting up something well of time. Not this guy, though. This guy's Instagram is genius. I Friggin' seriously recommend, even if you're not a Wheel of Time fan, just follow that account. Yeah, <laughs> because so we good. got because we have a lot of non Wheel of Time fans listening to this podcast. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> we might have brand new people. Yeah. But Ingatel's one of my favourite characters and it's kind of quite cool to see this guy's like sense of humour is bloody brilliant. So Yeah, Ingatel was one of those was my first what the fuck moments mm. in Wheel of Diamond, which we've spoken about mm. before, but mm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then we've got um a couple of others, right? Yeah. So we've got Guy Roberts. Guy now, Roberts. Tell me about Guy Roberts. Guy Roberts has been connected with the Willow Time show for a while. Yeah. So he has like some um, theatre production company in Prague okay. anyway. And he's been working with some of the, the, the people of What on Prime in theatre on stage while the stuff was being filmed. So we know that he had links anyway. Now we're being told that actually not only is he kind of distantly linked with these people but actually he's going to be in the show yeah and he has a dog and he has a dog now why is that significant because his dog only has one eye yes that is right so his dog only has one eye he put a picture up mm -hmm. on insta mm -hmm. about you know of him and his dog yeah and then we had some comments from some some interesting comments yeah, yeah. now what did those comments say suella uh so there's there's a woman who's been cast in the show and we know she's been cast in the show and she said this is the perfect dog for you <laughs> and uh, someone who we believe is a, a voice coach who may be connected um to filming in prague also wrote you're beginning to look a lot alike yeah well you have heard that owners and dogs end up looking very mm. similar right mm. but no the reason um, we're bringing this up is because the dog has one eye and who else has one eye in the wheel of time would be Uno. Uno. And when do we meet Uno? Is it in the first season? Right at the end of Eye of the World, um, yeah. beginning of, of The Great Hunt. It so is... it does work timeline-wise, right? Timeline-wise, um, I mean, we know we've got scenes that have been filmed in China. Yeah. And we we know, therefore, that the Shinarans are in this first series. Yeah. So therefore, and... Uno is entirely probable. Yeah, and Guy Roberts has not taken this post down like the wiki thing, right? No, no, it's still <laughs> this, there. This is still there. Check, this, it out, yeah, check, check it out, people. Check it out. Yourself. Check it out. And interestingly as well, uh, someone who I consider quite reliable yeah. said 
that he is Uno and he has it on good authority that he's Uno. Yeah. So take of that what you will. I mean, this is just speculation. I can't, uh, I can't like attest to it being, I don't have any <laughs> like direct sources myself. Everything I get is totally secondhand. I'm not going to sit here and claim that I'm in the loop somehow. Um, but. <laughs> oh, you're not in the loop? I'm not in the loop. Can you believe it? Yeah. Um, but we had another one uh, just this weekend. Yes. Evelyn Mock. Yes. Uh, Swedish comedian. Yeah. Yeah. Her her picture kind of sprung up across the social medias uh, mm. in the last few days. And I saw that picture and I don't know why, but I just immediately went, is that Verin? Why do you think that's Verin? I just got such a Verin vibe from her face. I don't know what it was. I I cannot put my finger on it. She just had this, this look of, I'm very nice and warm and cuddly, but I probably just snap your neck <laughs> snap your neck if you look at me wrong you know what i mean it was just that kind of like i could see it yeah i don't see Verin. i don't see Verin. and look the reason i say Verin's a big massive character in the whole like book series right Verin is yeah and all the big characters have been released by watson prime mm-hmm. like nobody knew about k alexandra bing min nobody knew about who was going to play Suam. very true and these big ones have been kept secret and then mm. Watt and Brian releases them. Mm. So in my opinion, if this person has been released or... It's minor. It's mi- it's a minor role. And mm. Verin is not a minor role. No, I agree. But having said that, Verin could be a minor role in season one. That's a fair point. Mm. I mean, who knows? Uh, it's Is it a stretch to say she's Verin? Abs- absolutely it is. Of course it is. It's a massive stretch. I'm just saying that that was my personal... I saw her and I went... Oh, I could see Varen there. But Varen's not a borderlander, is she? I don't know, but does it matter where Varen's Well, that's from? how they're always... sort of casting it, aren't they? But you could always change it. And I don't. I think there's going to be a lot of diversity throughout the lands anyway, so I don't really think that's significant. Okay. You know, I don't think... It's like, I look at the fact that Min has been cast to look like a borderlander, and perhaps she is going to be a borderlander. I don't think we're going to be seeing Bailon during this show. And then I think... Does it really matter where we meet Min? It just matters no, that we meet her. It's irrelevant because Berlin's only once, isn't it? In the yeah, whole, exactly. Whole so, book. you know, I just I I don't think these things are majorly relevant. I would rather have someone that can play the role rather than looks the certain way I imagined her to look in my head. Okay, but that's 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 just my personal. You know opinion. who I think? Well, not who I think. Well, somebody that I've been talking with has sort of you know ventured at me. Was it me? No. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have other people I talk to. I'm really surprised by that. <laughs> the person who I spoke to, and this is a source that I can't reveal, as in, <laughs> AKA, AKA my neighbour. <laughs> and um, what this person said is that they reckon that this person could be a younger Katsuan. And the reason for that is because it's New Spring is also going to be in there. We know that. So we're going to have the head of the greener jar from New Springs, which is Kareen. Yes. And we have a warder as well. Yes. And we all know that Katsuan turns up in New Springs. We do. So maybe um, it's her because knowing that the book, then she then disappears for like 20, 30 years before she reappears in the series. So it might be a younger Katsuan playing this minor role. And then later on, um, we're going to get the real Katsuan. I'm doing air quotes. Going to get the real Katsuan. That, that's what somebody said to me. It could okay. potentially be. Potentially, I could agree with you, but I feel like Katsuan could be played by the same person in flashbacks and 20 years later. Oh, because I don't disagree. she would look exactly the fucking same anyway. I don't disagree. So, um, I understand where you're coming from, but I would hate that. I, I, I would hate that. I don't... Because she's quite younger looking and that's too young for yes Katsuan but for me. makeup for god this is what irritates me about people it's like makeup cgis you know you don't think that ray fisher actually bloody looks like that do you a cyborg it's like it's he CG- doesn't he no he doesn't he's not an actual <laughs> <That's> cyborg <gasps> It's like, Hollywood it's is lying CGI. to me. It's CGI. It's CGI. You know, you can see. <sighs> you just got to put a greed face with a couple of dots on it. And, uh, is, am I getting through to you? That's, ex- that's expensive to do when you. Could... Is it your money? It's not my money, but I still can. I can still. It's Mr. How Bezos's money. <laughs> Jeff's got bare money. Don't worry about can it. He lose a bunch of his money to his like ex-wife. I don't think he's got that much money anymore. Even if he lost enough, he's got more than the rest of us are ever gonna <laughs> have. Jeff sorted. Don't worry, he's got this. <laughs> budget cuts. Yeah, that budget. Is that due to budget cuts, we had to cast she a took, younger cuts away. She took half. Yeah, she took half the will. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff woke up in the middle of the night. Half, half, half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. 
Oh, he didn't tell you the entire to half. Then he only told you half the story. <laughs> <laughs> Where can I cast Eddie Murphy in the Wheel of Time? Because that needs to happen. As Asmodian. <laughs> Fuck yes, here for it. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, what on Prime? <laughs> Fix this shit up. But. You know, speaking of the fact that um, if she is Varen, if she's Katsuan, more likely if she's just a, a bit part character, yeah. which I think is more likely. <laughs> Serving girl number two. Well, I, I personally, I, I would hate if she was Katsuan. I would hate that. I think mm. Katsuan, just pick an actor and just go for it. Just run with it. I, I don't think it matters if she ages in the 20 years. I think it's insignificant. And to be honest, I really want Katsuan to be some badass, big name that just absolutely destroys the role. But yeah, I mean, whether she is, I, I do agree. I think it's probably more likely a bit part, but still it's, it's very interesting. And, and that just about rounds up all the current news, rumors, and gossip, news and gossip and... The mild arguments about Nynaeve. Mild. Yeah. To put it mildly. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much us up to date on all the current rumors and... Leaks and... and speculation. Whatever's and swirling around the community. Outrageous theories that we have. But there is a lot more that we could actually talk about. To be fair, there's a lot more that we actually know. And since it's quite likely that we're going to be waiting another six, seven, maybe even eight, eight months, months yeah, um, until, until the show time, until the show airs, guess, you know, we could look back on what we know and speculate what the show might actually look like. Yeah, I think so. And we've yeah. got a lot of information that we could actually we make have. an educated guess. We can make some educated guesses. So I think in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what we know about episodes one and two so yeah. far and what might happen in those episodes yeah so there will be tv show spoilers here if you're trying to keep the element of surprise about what's going to happen in the tv show we are going to spoil all of that for you right now and also we will be talking about events in the eye of the world it's going to be unavoidable yeah okay so what we know about filming of episode one and two is that the vast bulk of it happened to be recorded during September to November 2019. Pre-Covid. Pre-Covid. Yeah. What was that like? Episode 1 is called Leave Taking and it's confirmed that this is what the episode is called. Yeah. And it's written by Rafe. It is, it's written by Rafe Judkins who is the showrunner. It's also, do, it's directed by, um, I'm probably not going to pronounce this name right, it's Uta Breischwitz. She has, she has qu- some notable directing yeah, credentials like actually. Netflix's Jessica Jones and Stranger Things. I loved and Jessica Jones. Yeah, Jessica Jones has also altered Carbon. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen that either. Um, and she also uh, directed a very critically acclaimed episode of Westworld. Westworld, like, what the fuck was that about? I was confused. Are you a machine? Are you not a machine? <laughs> Are you real? Are you not? What's going on? Who's this young guy? Why is this? What the heck was going on there, man? I um, I watched season one. I really enjoyed it. I I didn't get it. I kind of stopped halfway through episode two and I forgot what happened, so I didn't pick it up again. Episode two? I thought you said you saw the whole season. Season two. Oh, season two. Um. Listen, maybe I said it wrong. I don't know. (laughs) I'll go back and I'll edit this and I'll be like, fuck. (laughs) Or I'll be like, vindication. Um, (laughs) But yeah, it's she's got some she's got some notable credits behind her, so Mm. that bodes well. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it does, it does. I mean, Westworld is, is is sci-fi fantasy. Stranger Things is very fantasy. I mean, these are, these are fantasy credits here, so... Yeah. So her background's good, is what we're her saying. Her, back, her, her background sort of matches up to the Wheel of Time yeah. themes. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to episodes one and two, we kind of know a little bit more about episode one and two than we do about any of the other ones. Mm. And the reason is because way, way, way back in 2019, <laughs> um, What on Prime actually gave us this like minute long video, I don't know if you remember, where it was like a table read. Oh, yes. It was yeah. like the first kind of look we had yeah. at the Wheel of Time. It was brilliant. They were sort of sitting, they, they were sitting around a table and they were reading the script um, and we, we got it confirmed that this was for episode episodes one Mm. and two yeah because of that you know we got to see who was around the table and that was quite significant as well at the time we didn't necessarily know who everybody was but as people have been announced we've been able to see a little bit more as to who these people are so we've been able to see exactly who is appearing in this episode one episode two yeah that's something we don't have for the other ones no we don't like because we had that table read and there was actually a 
image released of like who was at the table, right? Yeah. Let's talk about who we absolutely know is filming was filming in these episodes one and two. So you've got Joshua, who's yeah, playing Rand. That's right. You've got Marcus, who's playing Perrin. Mm-hmm. You've got Barney, who's playing Matt. Um, you had Zoe... Zoe Robbins playing Nynaeve and Madeline, Ma- Madeline Madden playing uh, Egwene. And, of course, we've got uh, Rosamund Pike. As and Daniel Aslan. Yeah. Yeah. And it was Tam in there as well. Yeah, Michael uh, Mattel Hatton. And Abel and... Christopher Sharaf, uh, Juliet Howland, so that's Matt's parents. Yeah. Um, we also had his, uh, there's, there's two twin girls uh, in there that are playing his sisters, as well Matt's as... Matt's sisters. Matt's sisters, yeah. yeah, so Bodwin and Eldrin. We also have Michael uh, Tuine is playing Bran Elvir and uh, Lolita is playing Marin. Yes. Uh, we also got David Stern as Sam Bui, Mandy Simmons as Daze Conga. Uh, we had Johan Myers as Padden Fane. Yeah. Abdul Salis is uh, Eamon Valder. Stuart Graham uh, is playing Geofran Bornhold. Yeah. Uh, and then we... we had a couple of people that we're not quite sure who are, <clears> right? Like, Helena Westerman is playing a character called Layla Abara. Layla, and uh, we have Nana is playing uh, Danya as well. Yeah. We assume these are obviously uh, some two river folk. Uh, and we also had uh, Pierce Quigley playing Master Hightower. Master Hightower. Who uh, is the owner of the ferry that carries them across the water as they leave the uh, two rivers. After, is it two rivers or Shadow Log Off? Two rivers. After they leave two rivers. Not all it. the way out there, so it's, it's closer to home. Okay. Um, so those are... The likelihood is is that there's a lot more actors who are filming in these in these two episodes, but these ones are absolutely confirmed. Yeah, these are the table reads. So these are the ones that are going to have lines and you know significant parts rather yeah. than just a at least sig- hey, how much is this apple made? At least significantly filming scenes together. Yeah, because one of the things we do know is that there's a lot of different locations like outside in the wilderness in villages and churches and woodland areas that they've been filming but they also do have a studio uh, Moraine uh, Rosamund Pike spoke um, in an interview last year about how um, in Prague they had this abandoned car factory that has been uh, renovated yeah into, renovated into a, a studio. studio so we imagine they've probably got lots of green screens in yeah. there and they do stuff um, but certainly filming with the main Eamons Fielders these are the people we know are filming with them. Yeah. And that's, if you think about the names that we just said, there's someone very noticeably absent from that. Correct. And this person plays a guitar. <laughs> plays a guitar now, not a harp. Yeah. And his patchwork is on the inside. Tom Marilyn. And that's interesting that he is not there. There's also something else we know about uh, Alexandra... Villum. Let's call him Alex. So it's noticeable that uh, Tom, Alex, is is totally absent from here. And furthermore, we know that he actually didn't leave to film in Prague until November 2019. No, he did not. Which is after the filming, at least the majority of filming for episodes one and two. Now, we know they had set up this set location um, in Bovec in Slovenia for Emansfield. Yeah. We had leaked set pictures on the Daily Trollic Reddit, for example. There was a lot of um, these leaked sets that were coming out. We saw this completely constructed village, and then yes. a few weeks later, village destroyed with fire and whatever. So we know in that period... Um, the Trollocs have attacked. Trollocs have attacked. They filmed Winter's Night. Yeah. They've destroyed the village. And also, we had Daniel Henney on Instagram sort of talking about night shoots a lot of, yeah. during that period. So we know what they were filming there. Yeah, so then and this, Tom was not there. Yeah, so this then begs the question: Where the fuck is Tom? Where is Tom? Where, where is getting, Tom? We're not meeting Tom in Eamonsville, by the way. It like. doesn't look like we're meeting Tom there, are we? That's pretty major. And that is major because you know he helps Rand, you know, be like, "Hey, buddy, um, I know your dad's sick, and I know the wisdom can't help, but I was just wondering, yeah, who's scrawled a dragon fang <laughs> on the indoor, yo? At the implications. Yeah. Who tells Rand that I said I can heal? You know, no, knowing uh, Moraine and her like personality attached, people are like, you know what, I can do this because I'm fucking amazing and I'll just do this. But then, like, this then uh, goes with my personal, personal fan theory that they're going to kill Tam. Yes, that's true, Because they don't have Tom there 
to let them know that Moraine said I can heal. <laughs> it all works out. Everything is that. falling into place. Look at that. Look at that. You know, you've, you've got like these pins and string connecting across your walls. <laughs> I'm just like crazy guy like <laughs> yeah. with the face. Yeah. But then where do we meet Tom then? Because I know um, that unblurring of the script sort of mentioned that um, he was performing and Dana was like, hey, you know, he's got another song to do. Do we meet him at this particular inn or, you know, is, do we just meet him on the road to somewhere I mean the, logically it would be like you meet him at an inn where he's performing right mm. now don't get me wrong they could have shot some scenes at later dates but then you have directors who are directing this episode being there one week and then coming in months later yeah Yuta she she directs episode one and two by the time of November being finished, she's not in Prague anymore when Tom arrives. So you could argue that Tom isn't being directed for those scenes by the person who directs episode one and two, which kind of says that Tom isn't in episode one and two. That sucks. That kind of sucks. But that's... Again, we don't know. This is absolute, but this is what we can conclude. Okay. This is a good educated guess. This is a good educated... I did want to touch on the white cloaks the children of the light like you know there's two white cloaks that are on the table read mm. now how do you think they fit into this because there was that leaked footage wasn't there of this wolf running and jumping on a white cloak well or I'm is guessing... that in that later episodes not one and two i think that well no they're at the table read for episodes one and two no, I'm talking about the wolf attack. That's probably later on, right? I mean, the wolf attack, we, we can't say for sure. But I'm going to get into episode two because I think there might be wolves in episode two. The The white cloaks are certainly at the table read. Yeah. The two main white cloaks are at the table read. So they are. Maybe they're in the two rivers when the Trollocs attack. Maybe. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm speculating here. But it's interesting to me that they're definitely there. They're, they're there for the they've, table read. They've got it? lines. Yeah. In this part of recording, so they're absolutely there. Now, it could be... Okay, if you think about it, um, when you watch something on TV, you're never just in one location. No. No. Because if you think about... um, Let's use Game of Thrones as an example. Uh, You start in the majority in Winterfell. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we don't go to another location and be in King's Landing and there'll be yeah. stuff happening there. Because with a TV, when, when when you're making stuff for TV, it's you need to show the audience, not tell the audience. Yeah, because if you tell somebody in the TV, the likelihood they're just going to miss it. Yeah, like, for example, Pad and Fame comes into the village and tells the villagers that there's war in Geldon. Yeah, and then they probably cut to Loghain. Exactly. If if you're on TV, you're going to cut to show the audience, yeah. not tell the audience. Because exactly. the audience isn't going to respond to being told that there's war somewhere. They're not going to give a fuck. Yeah, let me know. So what? And? Yeah. yeah. You know, does it affect me? How does that bother me? <laughs> exactly. so my problem is... No, you need to go and see and you need to see the destruction. You need to understand the magnitude of that. Exactly. The other thing we, we did get that we do know is is different from the book to the TV show. Around the time that they were filming um, episode one, Rafe Judkins put a picture on Twitter of the script for the first episode, and it focused on Master Hightower yeah. and his death. Did it? It did. Master Hightower dies? They're going to kill him. Should I be sad? I don't know if you should be sad, but certainly it's a different tone to what we get in the books. Um, you know, we're left with this guy on the other side of the river shaking his fist like, you owe me a ferry. <laughs> uh, um, no, apparently this guy is going to go full Titanic style and go down with the ship. Billy that's, Zane. That's that's different. You know, I hope Billy Zane's in there and I hope he's like an awesome, like a character that you're not expecting. And suddenly he's like, it's me! Bonjour la tutti! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's me. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, it'd be beautiful. I'd love that. Um, but yeah, there's there's something there that we know is definitely different. So then we have to wonder how does Nynaeve get across the waters? Oh, does, doesn't she just part the waters like Moses and just <laughs> walk across? Well, Moses <laughs> and bangs a stick. Exactly. I and... would believe that. So this episode, leave taking, mm. we're assuming by the end of this episode mm-hmm. that they're Ready to leave Emmonsfield. Well, Leave Takings is a chapter in Eye of the World yeah. where they leave. Which I think is going to be the next chapter in our reread, isn't it? 
Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so prepared for that. Yeah, this is why we're doing this episode and not that episode. <laughs> I, of course I listened to it. <laughs> Who do you take me for? So we know they're going to be leaving by the end of this episode. Do you feel that it's going to be rushed? Like they throw a bit of Loghain in, a bit of the white cloaks in, and then you've got the whole events of Rand and Matt and Perrin meeting up for, well, for the first time for us on screen, and then the tack on Tam's farm and then winter's night attack and then tam's healing do you think it's going to be rushed do you feel like it might be rushed well they're built to be an hour and i think you can get a lot done in an hour That's to a be fair, fair. Point. That's a fair point. so is it that rush to say that they've left i mean do you really want to go into episode two still in eamon's field i, I don't think you do you want the story to have progressed by then so <laughs> I I wouldn't want them to still be in the village by episode two. No. You know what I want? I want twenty four episodes like they do with the Arrowverse, right? That's what I want. I want twenty four episodes per season, fifty minute episode. Yeah, yeah that's what well, I, I want. That's I, what course. I want. But, yeah, but life you know. just isn't fair sometimes. Yeah, exactly. But I I do think you know by episode two. Let's let the story progress. I think if you, you're dragging your heels if you're still in Eamon's field at that point. So yeah, I I would have liked them to have left by the end of episode uh, one for sure okay but what we the other thing that we do know about episode one uh, at least in terms of filming anyway it was confirmed by what and prime they put up a picture of the set of eamon's field and they said day one of filming and rafe confirmed that the first shot that he filmed was pad and fane arriving in eamon's field and, and looking out onto the village okay do you think that's where the show's going to start um no i don't think it's going to start there i think it's going to start with Logan. Mm. I mean, like, we need an introduction into what these powers are and what the big bad might be. And I think Can we not do that with Dragon Mount? Or do you think Dragon Mount doesn't work in this setting? I don't think it works. I think Dragon Mount comes later on. Dragon Mount's very talk and tell me about it. It's not really show me about it. Yeah, it? so I think um, Dragon Mount will come later on. I think it will start with Loghain because they need to set the precedence of what the show's going to be. Mm. Right, because you need to capture people's interest straight away. Yeah. So you go in, you see some crap, and then you just... So you go in, and then suddenly you see Loghain with an army behind him, you know, destroying stuff, and you'll see some Aes Sedai and warders and whatever little... whatever Gildan army there is being, you know, thrown aside. And you can, stuff like that. in these scenes, very easily tell the story of the male half of the power being tainted and the female yeah. half of the power... Being clean. Being clean and now being dominant. It's you like can, a, it's like a man's way. bathroom versus a female's bathroom. Right? Clean and gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, women's being gross. <laughs> <It's> accurate. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I think it is. <laughs> but that's what I think it is. Because we know that um, Loghain did his filming in Spain, I want to say. he Yeah, in January. And yeah. no one knows what that's connected to. And I think it's going to, you know... Just because you film this part and that part doesn't mean it has to go in that order. No. You know, they're literally just going to be like, okay, so Loghain's, you know, done this part. Let's add that to the beginning. Yeah. And then we add more bits as the you know, show goes on. So, clever editing. Or it could be something that they, you know, they looked at and they thought, maybe we need to put this in. So let's get mm. that shot now. It, yeah. could been, it could have been a, a secondary thought that works out really nicely. Exactly. It could be it, time is going to tell on that. But I do agree with you. I do think Loghain will... Loghain, the actor they've cast in Alvaro Morte is uh, is such a big actor that a lot of people are going to be tuning in to watch Wheel of Time because he's in it. Yeah. And you want to start with him basically, in it to grab their attention. Basically, he's the Sean Bean. Oh, <laughs> he's the Sean Bean of the Game of Thrones. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, he draws in the fantasy audience straight away. No, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, but that leads us into then episode two. Shadows Waiting. Shadows Waiting, um, and, which is is obviously, uh, again, a chapter in the books that refers to Shadow Logoth. Shadow Logoth. And this chapter was actually written by Kate... Schumann. Kate Schumann, thank you. Yeah, um, and same, di same director. They had the same director in Uta, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But no other um, actors were confirmed. Beyond what we, we, we already listed for episode one, the same actors, although perhaps not all of them... But those are the same actors that we know. Now, at this stage, you could easily say for episode two, who makes sense here? The Eamons Fielders, Moraine Lan, and perhaps the White Cloaks? Why are the White Cloaks? The White Cloaks here, Shadows waiting. They could have the camp on the way, or as they leave Shadow Lagoth. <clears throat> it think could it... be that kind of antagonistic action to break that up. 
I think it's um, it works better after they leave Shadowlock off because that works in the books as well, right? Because that's when Perrin and Egwene meet the White Cloaks mm. and Hopper kills one of them, doesn't he? Well, it, de- it depends on how quickly you go to Shadowlock off and exit Shadowlock off. Do you want to start with Shadowlock off at the beginning or do you want to end the show on Shadowlock off? There's the difference. I think... And if you're going to end it, then have the White Cloaks beforehand and it's then I think... you're running from. No, I think episode one's going to end with we're rest here for now and yeah. then you know and what we see is shadow log off i think that's how episode one's gonna so you think it will start there yeah and then episode two shadow waiting will be mm. they in shadow log off yeah now not only does shadows waiting clue us in that this episode is going to be at shadow log off we also know some of the locations that they filmed at for episode one and two yes uh, we know they did a lot in uh, Bovec and Tolmin in Slovenia for episode one for sure. Uh, but episode two, there's certainly some churches and ruins that they um, filmed on location for. Uh, so so they filmed at the uh, St. Wensley's Church and they also filmed at a place called uh, Dolsky Miln. And Dolsky Miln is very, um, it's like a ruins. Right. So it's these hollowed out ruins and the church. Now, we actually got a, a set picture that was official from What on Prime that came out um, saying that, they, you know, this was like a location shot. Now, we've seen the Matt's Dagger clip since. And I don't know if you remember Matt's Dagger. Uh, we kind of see that window with, with the moon. Oh, where there's the of, rubble on the floor and everything. And, and like the yeah. light is sort of coming through. That window looks exactly like the ones in the Wensleyist church. Okay. So that represents Shadowlog Off, and you can pretty much bet your house on it, <laughs> Shadowlog Off. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that Shadowlog Off is only at one location. It could also be at these ruins as well, or the ruins could be somewhere where perhaps the White Cloaks are camped out. Yeah, There's also true. that possibility as well. But we do know that these two locations were certainly filmed at there. Another place we know they absolutely definitely filmed at is uh, Prohonis Park. Right. And this is, it's a very uh, densely packed woodland area with trees and then you have these like if you, uh, sadly we can't show any pictures here but there's... Uh, if you look at the satellite view, you, you can see like, like tracks. Satellite and views it. of this park, you can see these gaps between yeah. these trees. And when I looked at that I saw Perrin and Egwene when they're running from the ravens. Right. Do you remember? Oh, yes, where Perrin was going to kill Egwene. He was a, contemplating. He was like, it's a mercy killing. Mercy. <laughs> <It's> a mercy <laughs> killing. But at that point, it, he's already got the wolves connection there as well. And we do know as well during them filming episode one and two that there were dogs seen on set. Dogs. Giant dogs. I like dogs. Yeah. Uh, so they were seen on set, so it's very likely that not only are we going to see Shadow Lagoff in this <clears> episode, we're also going to see some wolfy type it, stuff. Yeah, that actually takes me onto something else, right? Do you remember, um, I think Rafe said in some, was it a question thing that he does on Twitter or something that Perrin was going to speak to bears? Like, why the hell were they going to have Perrin as Dr. Doolittle? I... Dr. Doolittle's done, man. It does seem like a really stupid idea. It was... I was glad we, that we, got shot We've down. got to be thankful that that got shot down. Yeah, that, a, that just... I can talk to bears. Okay. Was, I wonder if it was going to be bears instead of wolves or whether it was going to be just animals in general. Yeah. Uh, Do you just... ever remember a situation where you meet a bear in the Wheel of Time? <laughs> no, I it's really It's a fucking don't. bear. No, I don't think you do, do you? No, I don't know who came up with that stupid idea, but it was stupid. Yeah, and it's, I'm glad that got shot down because I was like, why is he speaking to bears for? Fucking bears. In it. That's yeah. A, anyway. But we're definitely, I think we're going to have wolves, wolf links, we're going to have running from the ravens. I think the party is absolutely separating during episode two. Yeah. So where, if you knowing that episode three is called A Place of Safety, where do you think episode two will end? In Tarvalon? <gasps> Do you think they're going to, like... Well, maybe Camelin. Oh, yeah, Camelin. That actually makes more sense. And I know people say, oh, there's not going to be a Camelin in season one, but we've got a Basil Gill cast. Why they're, are we going to No, we're Basil? definitely going to have Camelin. We're definitely going to have Camelin. And, and this could be potentially where we meet Tom. Yeah. Given that we know that Tom didn't start filming in Prague until November, which would have been episode three onwards. 
This could be where we meet Tom. Yeah, I, I think um, we're definitely going to have Camelin. And I think it would make sense to have Tom and Camelin. Mm. Because he's not going to be in Shadow Look Off. I mean, who's he going to be doing a show for there, right? And um, we know Balon's not going to be there. So where else is there, right? Mm. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, another, this is another good point as well. At no point through episode one and two did we think we were going to visit Balon. No. I know we've got the White Cloaks and we meet the White Cloaks in Balon, but we also meet the White Cloaks in another situation with Egwene and Perrin. Yes. And I think that's more likely to be our first interaction to the White Cloaks than it is to be in Balon. And another thing that's interesting is that Kay Alexander was not anywhere near episodes one and two. No, not in those filmings, isn't it? Totally suggesting that Balon just don't exist. Yeah. Don't oh, exist. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So that... Pretty much leaves us um, at the end of episode two. <clears throat> so we think that the episode will then end with them potentially arriving in Camelin, potentially meeting Tom, yeah. potentially meeting Basil Gill. Making their way to the Queen's Head. Queen's Blessing. Sorry, the Queen's Blessing. The Queen's Blessing. And that makes an awful lot of sense to have Tom perhaps performing there. And yeah. That's... And that then gives you, if you think about the guitar reveal makes you wonder was that a little bit of set that we got to see in the background there There we go that's true that's true. something to speculate something to speculate because you know <laughs> moraine could have said hey guys if we ever get separated meet us at the queen's blessing in Camelin." yeah and that's why you know in that unblurring of the script rand's like has anybody else that looks like these guys not me because i look completely different <laughs> <laughs> turned up here <laughs> So there you go. So, so that's, that leaves us then on going into episode three, which we'll talk about in the next episode that we do of our TV roundup and speculation. Yep. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. A little bit different from us. Hopefully just as fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've I think en- it was. I've enjoyed arguing with you. Yeah, about Naneef. Yeah. I, still, I still think I'm right there. I put her as... I think we're done. In, in the top five, five M fielders, I put her as number four or number five. Definitely not in the top three for me. At this point, you're just trying to annoy me. I'm just saying it's that's how it is. Mm. Cool. And that's almost it for this podcast, apart from one last thing. Mm-hmm. A new section called, What Are You Watching? So what Swana, are you watching? Swana, what are you watching, you know, that's come out, that's... I am pretty much just watching Drag Race. <laughs> 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 I watched the Snyder Cut recently. Okay, yeah, um, and that was... It was so fucking awesome, it blew my mind. Oh, don't even start. Oh my god, I can't believe the character development for Ray Fisher and Cyborg. And the character development for... I mean, they they hit on the Flashpoint paradox for Barry. I mean, I could make an entire episode about the Snyder Cut. And I did, if you want to go and watch it on Water and Shade. (laughs) So, yeah, I also watched Godzilla vs. Kong. I know it's a cheesy, like... It's a cheese one of those cheesy. It sounds like monster, a cheesy B movie, yeah. It's a cheesy monster movie, but I really enjoyed it. It yeah. was good fun, yeah. It, it was a good laugh. And I'm also watching a series called Invincible. It's an animation and it's on Amazon Prime. I would recommend it. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Amazon Prime TV shows definitely interest me of late because I like to see what they're uh, what they're playing with over there. Yeah. And guys, if there's anything else that you think we should be watching or you want us to talk about, just yeah. drop us a comment in the section below. Yeah. Or join us on our Discord server. Yeah. Uh, and you can also find us on Instagram at Weaves of the World. Drop us a, a DM and you can be added to our chats. Simple as that. Simple as that. Uh, we've so got... do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. So a couple of people we need to say hey to in the community, uh, just a few shout outs and welcomes. Yeah, so first of all, let's welcome Noram from Andor on his way to the Black Tower. Yeah. Welcome, uh, lad. And uh, Adrath is going to the Water Yard as well. Subol is going to the Underworld. Yes, he is. Uh, that's a place for shadowy type yeah. characters. And um, Nabir is going to the, the White, White Tower. The White Tower, I've got a new novice as well. Uh, so welcome all of you. Thank you for joining us at Weeds of the Will and uh, we hope you have fun with us. Yeah, and we look forward to seeing how your story progresses. Yes. Awesome. And I think that's about it, right? That is about it. If you're interested in uh, finding out more about joining the community at Weaves of the World, just drop us a DM at Weaves of the World on Instagram and we'll get you all set up. Exactly. That's it for this week. So until the world of time turns. May the light be with you.